Existence must never be taken for granted. How do we know when a function has an inverse? This is the content of the amazing inverse function theorem that says that if you have a function f and inputs and outputs, it is locally invertible near f of a if the derivative of f at a is invertible. Now there's a little bit of fine print here. All of the partial derivatives must exist and be continuous. Okay, given that, then what can we say? Um, when is the derivative, and hence f, locally invertible? It is invertible near f of a if the determinant of the derivative of f at a is non zero. This is a big result. This is an important result. This is a deep result. It says that linear information, that is derivatives, can control the existence of nonlinear inverse functions locally. Now we're going to see how much farther we can go with this, but for now, let's look at a simple concrete example. Recall the function from R2 to R2 that sets up polar coordinates that has as outputs x and y and inputs r and theta, and it gives you r cosine theta, r sine theta. That's what's setting up the polar coordinate grid in the plane. Now, when or where is this function invertible? Let's compute the derivative. I take the partials in r, that's cosine theta, sine theta. I take the partials in theta, that's minus r sine theta, r cosine theta. Invertibility is controlled by the determinant of this derivative. That's r cosine squared plus r sine squared, which simplifies to r. Now, when is this zero? When is it non-zero? This vanishes only at the origin where x and y are zero. And you can see that. That's where the grid goes singular. That's where you, you can't say what is theta at the origin. It's not well defined. This coordinate transformation is non-invertible at that point. Everywhere else, it's invertible. This is a great example.